Welcome to St. Paul Cathedral. A special welcome to all those who are visiting us today. Please silence all cell phones and electronic devices as we prepare to celebrate Mass for the fifth Sunday of Lent. The participation aid for this Mass may be found on the Cathedral's website, ghocatholics.org. Since we are unable to receive a collection, we encourage you to place your offerings in the designated containers at the cathedral entrance and exit. Our celebrant is Father Stephen Pulsa. Please join in the entrance antiphon, grant to us, O Lord, a heart renewed. Recreate in us your own spirit, Lord. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Welcome, everyone. We're getting closer to Easter, and we noticed the statues are all covered and shrouded in purple. The purpose is, according to tradition, to focus our attention more on the mystery of God's saving power, the dying and rising of Christ. As we enter into the Paschal mystery and our own death to sin, let us first call to mind our shortcomings and our sinfulness. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive them their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
our reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. And they asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death that he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. With beautiful 
imagery Jesus spoke about his death and resurrection. And for the people of his time, some of them farmers, they knew all about planting seeds and harvesting. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Spring has sprung. If you look around, you see the crocuses coming up, the daffodils coming up. What seemed dead is coming to life. Jesus shared simple language to explain how we can share in his dying and rising. The same prediction of his death and resurrection is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In Mark's gospel, Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. This is repeated three times in Mark's gospel and also in Luke and Matthew. So today as we gather together and we see the statues covered with purple, our eyes are focused more on the mystery of the dying and rising of Christ. Our eyes are fixed toward the altar, the altar of sacrifice. Jesus will give his life in sacrifice for the salvation of the world. It's God's plan. Can we ever understand it? Can we ever understand it and appreciate it? Well, we can begin by considering the small seed, perhaps in elementary school, it was a project to take seeds and put them in a little bit of earth and water them and cultivate them and put them by the windowsill to get sunlight and see how they begin to grow. Jesus will give his life willingly and on purpose and he will rise again. Totally transformed, the very same Jesus. The tomb will be empty and Jesus will be glorified, that same human body for all eternity. And he tells us that when we die, believing in him, we would have new life too, just like his. So, in two weeks at Easter, we will renew our baptism promises. We will look forward to sharing more deeply in the life of Jesus. Because in our baptism, we die with Christ. We rise with Christ. We die to sin. We rise to life of grace. So for now, as we continue our journey through Lent, the words of Jesus challenge each and every one of us to authentic discipleship and total commitment to him. We are called to accept a cross in our life. We are called to be people of sacrifice, to go above and beyond, to help those who are hurting, suffering, those who are disrespected, those who are damaged in any way. Jesus tells us not to be selfish. He says, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. If we only look out for ourselves, we're losers. Life as self-centered is really denial of Jesus. Life self-centered results in destruction of self. But when we live loyal to Jesus, carrying the cross, faithful to him, we arrive at fullness of life. And so we are called 
to turn away from any sinfulness in our life. We are called to turn away from whatever holds us back from loving God with all of our heart, with loving our neighbor as ourself. We are called to love our neighbor, to go above and beyond, and to be of service to our neighbor. I invite you to look at the Post-Gazette online and maybe on print today, which is a presentation of an interfaith prayer service, which happened this week. And it is a prayer service as we continue going through the pandemic and also remember our neighbors at Tree of Life Synagogue a few years ago where the massacre happened. We pray for an end of hatred. We pray for an end of bigotry and discrimination. We pray that we can all live as brothers and sisters together as God's children. And if you look at it, you'll see Father Matthew Hawkins, who is from St. Paul Cathedral, who was a, an extraordinary minister here and a reader. You will see Bishop Zubik and other religious leaders. So to all together, we hope that we can help our culture be a culture of life instead of a culture of hatred and death. So when we enter into the spirit of service and sacrifice, we carry a cross. And as we look at the cross, Jesus on the cross, St. John's gospel, gospel tells us that is glory. When we look at Jesus on the cross, to our human eyes, it looks like defeat. But no. Jesus says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And out of obedience, Jesus handed over his life that we would have life to the full. So let us continue to be people of sacrifice, service, prayer during these days of Lent as we look forward to the victory of Easter. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Entrusting ourselves to the life-giving power of God, we voice our prayers to the Father. And our response today is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Subic, and the clergy of our own parish, that God will strengthen the pastors of the church in their ministry of teaching, sanctifying, and guiding God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of religious freedom in our country, 
But our government leaders will seek to protect the ability to practice our faith without restriction or penalties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For our parents and families, that they will find ways to grow together in faith, in prayer, and in service to others. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are preparing to be received into the church this Easter, that they will be strengthened in their journey of faith by God's grace and the lively witness of each of us in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick or suffering, for those grieving the loss of loved ones, and for all victims of abuse, that they will find healing and strength through the saving passion of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For all members of Central Catholic's baseball team who are here today, that the Lord will bless them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and gone before us in faith, that they will come to the fullness of life with our risen Savior in God's kingdom. And in a special way at this Mass, we pray for Lillian Spoonamore and all the deceased members of that family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, hear our prayers. Forgive our sins and lift us up in the grace of your Spirit as we prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily the passion, death, and resurrection of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and after instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Oh Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And for those at home watching an act of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for your participation and devotion. And when you see the flowers starting to pop up, think about that imagery of Jesus. Unless the grain of wheat fall into the earth and die, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. We share in the dying and rising of Christ in the new Passover, the Paschal Mystery. Please remember to keep your kneeler down so as to assist those sanitizing the church. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.